Okay, welcome to the next video. Now in these next few videos, I want to go over my workflow and I'm gonna do the Animation Mentor Class 2 assignment, which is the step over weight shift. And I'm gonna show you how I set up my scene, how I block out the main poses and how I approach these type of shots. There's lots of different workflows that you can do in animation and sometimes you have to do different things depending on the shot you're doing. So I'm going to try and keep it simple and go through the basics of what I do with every shot. So to start off with that, I'm going to go through how I set up my scene before I've actually started animating. Okay, so I have the rig referenced in with Stuart and I have made my shot cam and I've imported my image reference, which is now obviously scrubbing through. If you don't know how to make image references or how to film reference, there's lots of videos on the AM campus and I'm sure your mentor will also have a suggested workflow for that. But I'm gonna assume that you can open up Maya and you can import reference. And the other thing I can assume you're going to do is you can make your own shot cam. It's pretty important to make a shot cam even for these practice assignments because when doing character animation for TV shows, movies, you're always animating to camera. However, it's also really important that you animate with a perspective camera because if you have your model, which is completely off balance in your perspective, but looks okay in your shot cam, you're gonna have problems for people who are doing maybe um, simulations like cloth simulations or shadows and it just won't be as fluid as a properly well animated shot from every perspective so make sure you're always animating in perspective but also with a shot cam because both are important okay so in this first bit i want to go over what controllers i would use so before i even start animating anything i want to hide some controllers that i know I'm never going to need until maybe the very last 1% of polish. So by default, of course, lots of students, they will animate everything they see, which is very, very, very time consuming. So the first thing you can see, there's a yellow IK controller at the top and at the bottom. You wanna make sure these are turned off because you wanna animate with FK, these red controllers. IK is a very different type of sort of workflow and I don't think it's useful except for very very specific examples so I'm gonna just do FK please follow along and also do FK but FK is also a bit sort of confusing when there's so many controllers and they do similar things so I want to make my life easier by only animating the essential controllers so for example, if I look at my cog, I'm gonna make a very, very simple pose using every controller. So let me animate this back. There we go. And imagine they're leaning or something. So my chest has a nice pose to it, that's great. Let me show you what happens if I delete some controllers. So here's my pose, and using the pose ghoster, I'll make a copy. And then if I zero out all of these controllers, so all to zero, I'm gonna make the same pose, but using less controllers. So this hip controller, I think is really, really confusing. It looks like you really have to animate this. It's really important, but it's not. I'll give you two reasons why. If I take my cog, you can see the center of gravity is slap bang in the middle of the hips which is correct, it should be there. Now, the cog is how you move your character and it's called center of gravity cog. So if this pivot point changes at any point, I find that really confusing and it kind of throws off my understanding of the force, momentum. But if I use this hip controller and I animate this in any way, the center of gravity is now here but the hips are not in the correct place. The hips have now moved to over here, to the left side, which I don't like. So I'm gonna put this back to zero, select this hip controller, make a new layer. I'm gonna call it 
unneeded geo and I'll make it red so I know it's bad and I can hide this controller. So let's make the same pose again using just the FK and cock. So first of all, let's translate this across a bit. So there we go. Maybe I can drop the hip slightly. Get the knee in. Then rotating across, of course. So you get this point out. Rotate this over across. This maybe a bit more. I think rotate this one a bit more. And the cog a bit more. There we go. Rotate this back. It's a back and forth between the controllers. You always have to play with each controller back and forth. And maybe raise this up slightly. There we go. So I was being quite sort of a perfectionist, but this is now the same pose virtually, but I've only used three FK and the cog. So I've already saved myself six lines or six curves worth of splining because this is a hidden controller. So I will do this for my entire shot. If at the very, very end of my workflow, like in Polish, I can then unhide this, make really, really small like, subtle adjustments just to get the line of action slightly better. But for my blocking and my splining, I will always have this hidden on zero. So that's the first thing. The second thing is with your FK curves, it's quite easy to over animate the translates. Sometimes translating the top is good for the extra stretch or for maybe that sort of squash when they're landing. Um, but these things are also sort of polish and also it gets very easy to really push them down and squash them. And I don't really animate them until the very end. So another trick you can do, if you go to your windows, settings preferences, go down to file references, you can turn on allow locking and unlocking edits on reference attributes. So save this. So I can click on all of my FK curves, go to the translate Y and I can lock this. This just saves me the headache of having to check every frame and make sure that they are not animated. So I can now block out my scene and I don't have to worry about accidentally translating them and it's also a reminder to just stick to rotations for my first pass. I can always add things in later, but for the very first blocking pass, keep it simple. In the same category of stuff, these shoulder controllers, you can animate everything, but that's six curves for each shoulder, so 12 curves, that's a lot of splining. And you get very pretty posing if you rotate your shoulders. If you translate them, you kind of get this blocky mess, which looks a bit, mm, it's not good. So you can maybe polish with the translates, but just like with the FK spine, I would like to take my shoulders, make sure they're set to zero, so just zero them out, and then go right click, lock selected. Now I can't animate the translates. And I can do all my posing with rotations and I'm good. The next thing which is really important is the elbows for FK have two uh, channels, there's Y and Z. Your shoulders cannot rotate in Z, it's impossible. If you rotate them in Z this way, your shoulder is moving. It's not your elbow. Your elbow can go back and forth, that's it. So again, I go to my rotate Z, I lock this. I don't want to animate this. This also means if you only animate in Y, that means your shoulder, you have to animate this correctly. It's impossible to do this wrong because your shoulder is forced to do the correct, an uh, what's the word? The anatomy must be correct. If you're cheating with the rotate Z, then your shoulder will also cheat and your shoulders will look wrong, your chest might look wrong and everything will start to be broken. So this elbow locking is really important. Um, now in the wrists, technically you can't really rotate it back and forth. Like you can't do this rotation, but I think for the wrists, it's quite okay to be flexible. So I will animate everything in the wrists. Okay, so with this simple setup already, I've locked a lot of curves, which I don't have to animate. 
If I go down to the legs, and also I'll turn on the FK, sorry, IK arms, you'll see that there's these pole vectors for elbows and knees, which they mean the, the direction of the elbow and the direction of the knee. Now you'll see in the IK controller, there's also the leg twist attribute. This does the exact same thing. So I would only choose one, either choose the pole vector, which is this one, or choose the leg twist. I prefer to use the pole vector. So I will always just select my IK feet, lock leg twist, and select my IK arms, and lock arm twist. I can't animate it. And the last thing I do to clean up my scene is take my squat and stretch at the top, and I add this to the same layer of the hips. And now I can also take off my hair as well. So I'm box like this, add this to the layer. Just checking, I got everything. Yep. So now I have a, I have a very clean rig, which I know I will be animating the correct curves on. So quick update, sorry. This controller at the back as well. This is the sort of IK spine adjustment. You don't need to animate this until maybe polish, if ever. So again, add this to the hidden layer. So I've saved myself roughly 20 to 25 different curves that I don't have to animate, I don't have to spline, and I still have the option to turn them all on in the polish pass and do a very small adjustment if I want to. Honestly, I often don't. You can get perfect animation with just this rig. You don't need to have every controller animated. This is enough. Okay, so now I've set up the rig. The very last thing I do before I animate is I want to select everything I have and set my key on frame one. So I highly recommend you download the picker for this. Like I said, I won't cover how to use this, but you download the picker and then you select everything, select all, and I hit S on the timeline. This means everything I now move has auto key enabled. Auto key should be at the top right hand corner, this red button. Make sure this is enabled and then you can start animating and doing your posing. So this is how I start my scenes. Every single scene is the exact same way and I will go through the rig and I'll find what I want to animate, what I don't want to animate and I'll turn things off, lock things and hide things. So I make my work as simple and as fast as possible. So if there's any questions, please let me know. And I will hopefully get the blocking pass and the spying pass done for this shot in the coming week. So you can see how I actually block out and work out my scenes. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.